Hello everyone, today on Scottish Memories we are chatting to Ian Buchanan. How are you all? I hope you are all happy and healthy and safe wherever you are out there. Just before we get started, please remember if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button on both YouTube and on podcast. Remember to leave us a like and leave us a comment as well. And on podcast, please leave us a rating wherever you get your podcast from as well. It'd be nice to start to build up a rating on there because right now we have none. <laughs> uh, but today, I'm really over the moon with the, the guest we have today, but before I do, I want to give a big shout out to an old college friend of mine, Lindsay, who actually is a mutual friend of mine and our guest today and was very kind to help set up this interview for me. So Lindsay, thank you so, so much. Really means the world to me. You are an absolute, absolute angel. Thank you very much. But today we are chatting to Ian Buchanan. Scottish-born actor Ian Buchanan has appeared in some of the most iconic shows of all time. You'll recognise him from things like Twin Peaks, Quantum Leap, Charmed, Stargate SG-1, All My Children, Nip Tuck, Days of Our Lives, General Hospital, The Bold and the Beautiful, to name but a few. Ian, hello. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. I feel uh, I feel almost energized just having heard everything that I've actually done. So I kind of I have to say that it's a, it's a proper honor for me because you have appeared in two of my favorite programs of all time, with Quantum Leap and Target right, yeah. SG One. Those were a big part of uh, of my uh, well watching watching television generally, especially Quantum Leap. A big part of my um, early teens and things that right. that was that was that was a lot of fun actually that was yeah that, that was fun I have to say I think probably think that program was one of the reasons why I became an actor just the variety really? wow. yeah yeah it was a big inspiration to me as young but uh, thank you so much for sparing the time to of come course. on um, how are you first of all are you healthy and well. Yes, yes, good. Getting, getting, I mean, things are, it's, it's an extraordinary time right now. And we uh, added to it all here in California, we've got wildfires. So it just becomes, it's so, you know, the only reprieve right now is getting out to walk for an hour or two during the day. And now, of course, they're saying, please, you got to stay home because the air's so bad. So it's like, mm, I don't know. So, but apart from that, yes, I've been, I've been, I've been good keep myself fairly busy. I shot a whole series on using Zoom and iPhone and iPad, which were, is now airing right now on Instagram. So I've been, I've been good. I've been, I kept myself saying I miss traveling, of course, which is a huge part of my summer normally. But uh, Yeah, I have to say that it's happened over here as well. Uh, there was a television program we had here with David Tennant and Michael Sheen, where they did the entire thing on Zoom. And it, oh, yeah. was, it was an incredible thing to watch, actually. Yeah, I've been, I've been thoroughly impressed, not so much by, I mean, the idea of sitting at home and recording myself never appealed to me. And I was a little kind of hesitant to get into it. But once we sort of found the rhythm of it, and then I saw the end result, which basically was down to editing, which is brilliant. Great music with this young kid I've known all of his life who did original music and just you know, special effects and stuff. It's pretty astounding. And I was like, even, you know, I was, I was thoroughly impressed and people are liking it. And it's pretty, you know, it has a mystery and it, it has a uh, sort of intensity to it that, uh, that, that works on this, on this format. So there we are. We'll see. I, I, I have to say, I've kind of fallen in love with it because it's allowing me to have these conversations. So right. So I've properly fallen in love with it. But uh, was it you were, as I mentioned, you're, you're Scottish born. You were born in Hamilton or you grew up in Hamilton? Uh, I was born, born in Hamilton. I was raised in East Kilbride, right. which um, when I first came to the States and I tell, I'd say with my s still very Scottish accent, East Kilbride, people would say, Disco Bride. Wow, that's an extraordinary name. And I'd be in East Kilbride. <laughs> 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 like uh, so then I just would say Hamilton and then yeah. of course now with this great you know everybody knows Hamilton now with the you know the musical and you yeah. know Alexander it's, Hamilton so it's funny I've got uh, obviously I've got a few friends from the states and it's funny when you say somewhere from Scotland they, they tend to emphasize a different part of the world of the 
game yes. a lot of the time, which makes it sound completely different. Right, yes, of course it does. I, uh, I, d- I no longer correct uh, Edinburgh. I don't, I don't bother. I can't. It's just like I just go, yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, you should definitely go there. Yeah, it's great. I just can't, like, you know, I, I, uh, I have, like, you know, just, just, like, very, of course, very fond memories, just that people love to meet Scottish people, especially, you know, America and Scotland are such a, a wonderful history and a great connection. But every time I've met, and particularly celebrities, and often, like, you know, sort of movie stars who maybe or they were in music hall originally, but whenever I'd meet them, they would sing, I belong, I belong to Glasgow. And I'd never heard that song until I came to America. Because who sings it? Nobody sings it in Scotland. But I've, Kurt Douglas has, has sung it to me, and Donald O'Connor has sung it to me, Martha Ray sung it to me, and even Annie Ross, who recently passed away, she said to me, like, don't you get sick of that? Like, did you ever hear that in Glasgow? I said, I never did. No, it's like <laughs> it's funny you mentioned Kirk Douglas because um, when you said the song, it popped out of my head. He sang that in the Edinburgh Playhouse for mm. fundraiser for the Commonwealth Games. So he sang "I Belong to Glasgow" in the Edinburgh Playhouse in the middle of Edinburgh, and I can remember the whole audience going, "Wait, what?" <laughs> That's funny. He probably did tell me that. I can't. I, I couldn't remember why he was connected to, but he he had played in Scotland, obviously. So yeah, it was the, it was the fundraiser for the Commonwealth Games. I've got I've got oh, a good. very right. small recollection of it. So growing up in Hamilton, um, do you, do you miss that area? I mean, obviously you've been away. No, well, what? no, <laughs> <laughs> no. I uh, I I kind of uh, I was I was one of those. Uh, kids who just couldn't wait to get away i just couldn't wait i couldn't uh, i couldn't wait to get to glasgow and then once i got to glasgow people like did say like you know the uh, uh the best thing about glasgow is the london train and of course i was like i love glasgow i still love glasgow but then i loved london of course as soon as i got there and after london i got to move to new york so and new york is a lot like glasgow actually just uh, architecturally and also laid out in like the block system yeah. so uh no i didn't i wasn't a huge fan of hamilton or or lanarkshire or i loved ayrshire where my family have lived now for many many years i loved ayrshire um and uh i have family in edinburgh and i always loved to go to edinburgh so but i wasn't it's strangely enough no i wasn't like a, i think because I, I was in East Kilbride and I, when I first, we were first there, it was like, very, like a village and then it became a designated new town. Right. So then there was this huge influx of not only strangers, but kind of aggressive city people had been kicked out of like, you know, like, like uh, surrounding areas of Glasgow to come live here in this, you know bucolic rolling hill countryside with these little box houses and stuff and it just changed for me it just became like a i think all all of my energy went into sort of defending myself so i realized i would be much better off in a place where i could not defend myself and just expand myself so that's where i kind of headed i I get that i totally understand that when i um first decided to go to drama school Obviously, my parents were pushing me to go to Glasgow, but I wanted to get away, and I wanted I, I wanted to go down to London. I didn't, I, 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 maybe a little small mind at the time, but I didn't want to be a Scottish actor stuck in Scotland. Right now, you know, I'm, I, I, I've embraced, and, I, and obviously, I'm doing this, and I'm very proud of it. But right. younger, and I was just, I just want, I want to get out, and I want to explore, and I want to see more than this. You know what I mean? So, right. I suppose it's kind of the same thing a little bit. Yes. Uh, yeah, I think I, I, I'm sort of fascinated now, especially like I have uh, several Scottish friends who have, you know, they've uh, retained their accent, they've become hugely successful. And I think it's brilliant. But I, I you know, Ian Charleston was a very close friend of mine when I was, you know, very young in London. And he, you know, would always encourage me to, why, why don't you like study, be an actor, be an actor. And I was like, Nobody can understand a word I say. How could I possibly? Because nobody could change that. I said, I don't. I wouldn't know how, and I didn't until I got to New York, and then it was 
for some reason in London, I didn't, you know, in London, you'd be called Jimmy or Jock or like, oh, they, you know, I'm sorry about these notifications. It's like, I, it's with the volume on my, on my computer, it's like crazy. Um, but when I got to New York, suddenly it was easy. I was able to work and study and get rid of it. And, you know, become, I became an actor in New York. So I was very fortunate with that. But the, I, I, I'm sort of amazed that, you know, my, I, I just have a couple of Scottish friends including Alan Cumming, and I sort of, I swear, I'm, I always like to say, do you take like Scottish lessons or something? How do you keep this accent up? And how does it not, like, it's so extraordinary to me because I kind of, if I fall back into it, I, it's kind of there, but if I don't, then it's like, a, I don't even dream in Scottish or, or, or I don't even think in Scottish anymore. Yeah. So, uh, it's funny that I was mentioning this, who was, it, it was Colin Mockery, I was chatting to him, because obviously he was born in Scotland, but raised in Canada. So he's just, obviously he's got a Canadian accent, but he said he's met Scottish people who have lived in Canada for 60 years and still, it's, you know, still a strong Scottish accent. And right. my wife's gran is Italian. She was born in Italy, moved over here when she was in her 20s. She's been here for 60 years and you would think she was just off the boat. <laughs> she has not lost that Italian. It's funny how some people just hold on to it, isn't it? Right. Yeah. I, well, I guess if, uh, I mean, the need, if you have a need to be understood, I think you, that's where, like, yeah. Like, I mean, I, I, I remember jumping into cabs in New York when I first was there, with, you know, say, you know, 38th th and 7th, and they'd be like, what? And I'd be like, 38th and 7th. Oh, it's like, oh, God, like, I'll write it down, like, you know. It's uh, how I ended up with a career on television without subtitles. I have no idea, but I, you know, it's like <laughs> I've always heard the jokes that when Train Spotting first came out, when it went to America, they all had to watch it on subtitles. And things like well, they did. I, I actually went to see it several times with friends of mine who wanted me there to explain to, and I was like, I can't do this. It's like so rude. I'm telling you, I'm translating while people are like, it's I, you can't talk all the way through a movie, but. Uh, so growing up, did you get to explore Scotland a lot? Was a lot of staycation um, here and there? Yeah, we did. We did. We we went. Around. I had um, my father's cousin was the station mistress, uh, the railway station mistress at Ardlui on Loch Lomond. So oh, we were that. That was kind of a, a, a. We were there like several times a year. Uh, my father's other cousins were in the Trossachs. They were in the Killin. Um, I had I, I have an aunt in Edinburgh, so Portobello was our seaside, like you know, that was our seaside holiday, and also Millport, right? Yeah, 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 which we did every single year for the month of June. Which I, you know, in fact, my family still like they did, now they do it for the day, I think, or they maybe camp. I'm not sure what they do, but we would go for a month. So with my grandparents, so that was I, I loved that. That was a nice. That was a nice, and oh, for some reason, Millport, the Isle of Cymru, I think with the Gulf Stream or something, always had palm trees and was always the kind of, I don't know, it was, always, it was the closest thing to being away. So that was nice. I like that. The more I've been chatting to people as well, it's funny that Scotland has got some incredible beaches that you just wouldn't picture that we'd have. Yeah, some of, some of those Western Isles are just the, with the white sand and the blue water. I mean, maybe one day of the year. I'm not sure. The yeah. one day they take the photograph, I think. I think the rest of the time it's probably the same as, as everywhere else. <laughs> yes, pretty much. That's why you were mentioning as well, the sort of going to Portobello Beach. That used to be a big thing for people from the West Coast. Yes, and, yes. Uh, like Glasgow and everything, it seemed to be for like the Glasgow trade fortnight. They would yes. go over Portobello Beach and it would just take over and things. It's kind right. of not so much now, but that did used to be a big thing. Yeah. Uh, I was there. I, when was I there? I went to see my aunt. Uh, she's still, uh, she's in Duddingston, I guess now. I'm not, but she, uh, but with that, we were there. I think we'd go for two weeks in the summertime with my, with my yeah. grandmother. We'd take the bus from Glasgow to Edinburgh. Do you get the chance to come back often now? I do. I would have been there. Uh, I was there in March, actually, for my nephew's wedding when this whole thing, this uh, uh, lockdown, I guess they call it there. But uh, 
I have dual citizenship, but uh, at the last minute they included the UK and countries where you had to leave and get back. So I had to cut my uh, the trip short a week and got back. And normally I would have been there for two weeks of June, two weeks of July, but had to not do that this year. So yeah, I kind of miss it. I like I love I love the summertime there. I don't I don't much like the winter time anywhere, but I love the summertime there. You know, it's like when it's I love uh, being outside at you know ten o'clock at night or or I I still laugh when you know I've, uh, my family live on a farm, but I still laugh when they say like oh we're <laughs> we're gonna do a barbecue tonight, and I'm like I like. 30, 40 years ago, the idea of that would have been, and I remember the first barbecue ever, my, I think it was my ex-brother-in-law, he was all like, you know, he bought like a barbecue and he's going to do a barbecue. And of course, everything just ended up, it was fire lighters with chicken on top. And then it was that just, you might as well have eaten the fire lighters. There was nothing was cooked. The coals never caught on. It was just ridiculous. But now they've got it down to it a fine art so it's a great thing to do especially when the weather's nice and you're outside and it's still light at 10 or 11 o'clock at night it's, it's quite it's wonderful it's great and, and barbecues are a funny thing here because um, I'm, I'm the same it's one of the things that every now and again mom and dad would say we'll get the barbecue out and they do it and it was this, we don't do it right here you know it's just burgers and sausages on a roll that's it. not like in America or Australia where they really you know they know how to barbecue Right. Well, well, the only and but the other the good thing about the barbecue is it keeps the midges away, which is kind of you know the smoke does. But the other thing is like the smoke generally ends up inside the house because not it's just I think it's like it's kind of like the brooms actually. It just makes me laugh. It always makes me laugh when uh, when uh, yeah things like that always sort of tickle me. So. I can just always remember our mum's for some reason still always left the washing on the line. Of so, course. Everything's stinking of smoke. You know, oh, I'll try yeah, it. We find yeah. and you go like, oh, great, lovely, thanks very much. <laughs> yeah, yeah you, have to, you have to think these things through. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. So uh, when, the, when you do come over, when you get the chance, obviously you're visiting family and things. Is there yes. things you go, that you go, oh, you know what, I want to go do that. I've not done that for ages. Uh, yeah, I do, you know, I kind of, it's sort of hard because it doesn't, you can travel six thousand miles but you've got to go the extra 30 to see individuals otherwise they feel like you know they, they don't matter you know heaven forbid everybody should all come together just to give you a break and you can spend like you know what so I generally spend a lot of my time going to visit people or but uh, I have a brother who's a landscape gardener <coughs> excuse me and one of his uh, happy places is Dumfries house that you know Prince Charles renovated yeah, yeah, yeah. the gardens are beautiful and I love I, I go there with my brother when I'm home we just we love it it's just I love the house and he loves the gardens and um I love Colleen if I have Colleen Castle if, if, if I have any you know American friends over it's a, an easy hop to get down there and I do I still love to go up to Loch Lomond and Oban and uh up to Glencoe is kind of, you know, I love, I love all of that. I think it's, I think it's, it's delightful. I think it's sort of, uh, it's, you know, although it's kind of interesting now that people like saying to me, oh, did you, uh, have you, have you ever done the Outlander tour? And I'm like, well, no, I actually haven't. That's not something I would do. And they go like, oh, we're going to Scotland as soon as we can to do the Outlander tour. And I'm like, Okay, but what is that? I haven't actually seen the show. They're, oh, well, it's this, you know, and they do this. And, of course, it's all these wonderful places that the show, the, you know, Inverary Castle and, yeah. and uh, uh, Glencoe and all these great places, but they've now become synonymous with Outlander. Yeah, I've, I've had it as well on, on the channel. I did, a, I did a series where I went down every single close on the Royal Mile. So we just, we, you can imagine it took me a while. <laughs> but we went, I went down every single one, no matter where it went, I just walked down it right to the end to show what was there and explored. And I had people that were saying, that were watching it, just waiting till I got to Bakehouse Close that was an Outlander. They were just going, yes, you got there. And I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about, but okay. <laughs> right. it's, it's, that's extraordinary. It's really it's extraordinary. It's really had a massive impact on, I think, um, the interest. Well, 
in Scotland, though. Like, tourism, tourism. I, I, I would. I think you know when everything gets back to whatever it's going to be, the new normal, or or uh, it's going to be. And I think it'll be interesting. You know, it'll be hopefully there'll be you know masses of people like going there and and, and enjoying it, enjoying Scotland, and spending money. And yeah, well, that's kind of the other thing I was going to touch on because. But then I, then I see it a lot with the, with the people getting in contact from watching Outland and everything like that. They say, no, I've got Scottish heritage. And I kind of mentioned to this to you before we got started, a lot of the people that get in touch, they've they're, uh, got Scottish ancestry or, or they're, they're expats. They've moved away when they were young and never came back and things like that. And now it's revitalised everything. But for people over in America or Canada that have, uh, that have got Scottish heritage, they really hold on to it. They really, yeah. you know, uh, the same with people over in America. I'm sure you got a lot when you're in New York saying, oh, I'm Scotch or I'm Irish and things like that. Yeah. Do you find a lot of that over there? Do you know a lot Yes, of I think when I first, uh, not so much when I was in New York, but when I first moved to California in the 80s, and uh, people were, you know, the character I played on television was Scottish mm. or originally from Scotland, and I got invited to do more Scottish things here than I'd ever done in Scotland, including Highland Games, like, you know, like big Highland Games, you know, yeah. like uh, four times a year. I do that for many years. It was a lot of fun that I'd meet a lot of, uh, a lot of the people who were originally Scottish and a lot of people who maybe had just, you know, Scottish ancestry. And, but um, yeah, it was, it's pretty, it's sort of, it's fascinating. There's one community in New Jersey called Kearney, where I swear to God, everybody, it's just like, it's like Brigadoon, but I'm not sure that's a good thing. <laughs> it's like everybody has this very odd sort of hedrum hodrum sort of Scottish accent. It's, it's very interesting. It's, uh, <laughs> I had, uh, last year, I had a, a pipe band reach out to me from America. They, they had came over here and they were entered in a pipe band competition um, and they'd watched the channel and they said, look, we'd love to, to meet you. Can you. This is where we're going to be. The whole band's going to be here. Do you want to? So it was in Prince Street Gardens. And I, and I was filming that day anyway. So I went down and I said hi and they were lovely. And you know what? They were brilliant. Like mm. it, it, it was really, in some ways, I think over there, uh, like you said, the Highland Games, and they seem to hold on and celebrate it a lot more than we do here. Yeah, and also, uh, you know, my, I, I often do the Hollywood Christmas Parade, uh, and they, it's kind of become more international. It's like, you know, it's, it's a parade of, you know, just entertainment people, but pipe bands and marching bands. And this, uh, the culture in schools here is a lot of, like, brass, ba brass band, and they have bagpipes, and they have drums and marching, and, you know, it's a, a huge part of of education here in, in high school and it's kind of fascinating it's really fascinating it's very uh, my in fact my nephew and his family were here this past uh just before we're at the christmas and i was doing the christmas parade and they came and they were like <laughs> i don't think they'd ever seen anything quite like it even uh between scotland and now they live in kent uh just outside of london but they i they'd never the kids were just like looking at these thousands of people in kilts and they're like playing drums and down the street and I, you know, it was, it was, it's pretty incredible, quite, quite remarkable actually. Uh, me and my wife got married just uh, almost two years ago now and we got married in Florida and Orlando because uh, my wife is Disney obsessed. Um, so, but it's the only place open right now is actually Disney World. Yeah, I think so. Uh, but my dad had never been, never been to America. And, and he, he's, he was 73 at the time. So we brought him over and we took him to Universal Walk. And when he saw all the lights and everything, because, you know, he's a, he's a Scots lad. He's never seen anything like that, apart from uh, Leicester Square. But it's not quite the same. You know, when you saw everything, he was, you should have seen his feet. He was like a kid. He was like, this is one of the wonders of the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I, you know, you, yeah, I, I kind of forget that every now and again, especially if I'm working for Disney and I have to do something at Disneyland and I kind of, you know, I'm like, oh, here we go. But then you go there and it's like, wow. Like, <laughs> I've done kind of private stuff there where you get to just run around and do the whole thing. 
and uh, it's it is it's pretty magical. It is it is pretty pretty extraordinary just that uh, that that experience. Yeah, to see a seventy three year old man surprised, you know what I mean? Yeah. When he's seen everything. It's like oh, there you go, <laughs> and right. you can imagine that sort of grumpy Scottishness as well. Wow, oh, here you go. Eh? <laughs> Yeah, so if okay. anyone's going to come over here, what would be your top tips for people if they were, if they were going to come over for the first time? Uh, well, I always, you know, I, I always say to people, like, go up one side and down the other, which they, is kind of, you know, either start out in Glasgow and go up the West Coast and cross over and come down the East Coast and end yeah. up in Edinburgh. And if you want to go a little further, go down towards the borders, which are, you know, also just down that the eastern side, I think is more interesting of south of edinburgh but i i always like i always recommend that and I, i've mapped out for people because the great thing uh you know about americans even especially before you know we were had the internet before we had access of uh, gps and everything else i would be at work and somebody had maybe said to me like a week before like oh you know we're gonna go to scotland for our vacation and you know, one week later, they come in with a huge map. <laughs> like, could you... Oh, it's probably the actual size of Scotland. Oh, yeah, like, this, like a huge map. And so I would, you know, like, yeah, well, you go, got start in Glasgow, and, you know, you then, you know, either fly, you've got to fly in some place, like, you know, either fly in through, through uh, Edinburgh, or fly in through Glasgow, and go up, you know, up through Loch Lomond, up to Oban, go up through Inverary, go all the way up as far as you can, cross over, and then come all the way back down and end up in Edinburgh and like, give them hotels and stuff. So I had, I actually had like a tour that was, you know, because finally it was, I had, it, it, you know, you, I, but then on those days, you know, people had to call up and, and make reservations and try to, you know, check availability. Now they can go online and just, you know, book everything. So, but I always had fun doing that. And uh, usually there was, which was <laughs> always kind of funny because people would come back and they would like invariably they'd be people I worked with and you know they'd be associates and some of them would be friends but they didn't of course invariably want to say hello to my family and I was like well yeah I'm sure that'll be fine so but they would always come back with you know photographs they'd print their photographs and they'd come back with the photographs of my family <laughs> <laughs> family and the kids and of course the kids are Scot Scottish and they're like who are these strangers you can see the kids on their faces they're like Whoa, what is the, who are these strangers that keep showing up here like they want to take our photograph like what has got always very funny and I'd look at these and I'd be like oh that's wonderful but I completely like and my sisters would call and my brothers would call and say stop sending complete strangers to our house <laughs> I mean I can't help it what am I going to say what am I going to say? They, like, you know, like my family don't want to. I can't say that. I cannot say that. I mean, if you come here, you can go visit them. I know you can. But like, well, we wouldn't. I was like, well, I know that, but you know. I just love the idea of these little kids going. Why do these Americans keep showing up for a picture? <laughs> In fact, no, totally, like totally, like <laughs> they were, they were completely like, yeah, and they were very. I mean, they were very upfront about it, like. You know, I, I remember one of my friends came back and said, like, <laughs> repeated the conversation that one of my nephews, like, kept saying, like, I want to go play football. I'm bored. <laughs> and they were, like, trying to engage in conversation, and they brought things from America. And he was like, I told you, I'm bored. I want to go play football. I'm bored. <laughs> Which I thought was just, like, genius. So, like... <laughs> Like Scot Scotland at its finest. There yep, you are. Absolutely. Scottish hospitality. Absolutely. Hello, nice to meet you. I'm bored now. Can I go? Yep, 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 exactly. <laughs> um, I like to finish off Ian with what I call um, difficult choice questions. Designed right. difficult for us Scots, really. Uh, so, shortbread or tablet? Oh, definitely tablet, but. You know, as you get older, you can't. I mean, my teeth like scream like with a piece of tablet right now but you know shortbread like dipped in, in in coffee in the morning there's nothing better so i would say at this point definitely shortbread good shortbread but you yeah. know yes good i i would say shortbread it's funny since i've been started doing these well the more the more um people reaching out to me going 
what's tablet? Because <laughs> it's obviously what? It's, no, I know it. No shortbreads, but tablet. They're like they're thinking I'm eating an iPad. You know what I mean? They just don't right, know yeah, them. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's Draven Toffee was the other one. I remember that was tablet. What was that? Straven toffee was was it was made in Straven and it was like a block and it was ta it was tablet but it's called Straven yeah, toffee. Not, I've, I've got I haven't heard that for years, absolutely years. Yeah. Um, haggis uh, or mints and tatties? Well, uh, you know I'm vegetarian, which I I uh, have been for a very long time, except when my mother was still around. And every time I'd go home to Scotland, she'd say, oh, so it's, you know, oh, son, uh, the butcher is we're all excited. He's, he's made a haggis. And I'd say, mom, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm vegetarian. She goes, not when you're at home. Not when you're at home. <laughs> so, like the worst thing. <laughs> but we do a burn supper here with a vegetarian haggis, which I really like. My so wife is vegetarian, and some of the vegetarian houses are beautiful. They are it's really great. I try to. I sometimes I I, I slip them back from uh, from Scotland, but otherwise we just we get them here online. So they're really they're really good because uh, I, they're great. But um, I I have tasted haggis. I liked it. Mince. I, I've never really been a great mince person. So, but potatoes I love. So I and I'd say maybe Best. choice of probably. Bad vegetarian mince and, and potatoes. <laughs> it's funny what you were saying there about, about your mom going, not at home. Um, when my parents first met my wife when she was vegetarian, it, there's that generation thing, isn't it? They just don't get no. vegetarian thing. And even now, after they've known her for 12 years, they still don't get it. Right. And we were... Uh, I made a beautiful veggie lasagna one night for a family thing and my dad and his pals devoured it and I just never told them until afterwards and they're like, that's lovely, what was it? I was like, vegetarian. They're like, does that mean I'm, a, I'm one of them now? I was like, right. what and what? <laughs> they just don't, didn't get it. <laughs> yeah, I used to, I, I, I would say it's vegetarian, it's not a judgment. It's vegetarian, it's a personal choice, it's not a judgment. I'm not saying there's something wrong with you eating whatever you want, it just doesn't work for me, so. But, you know, but you don't, now it's gluten-free, and it's like, you know, especially, you know, when you're around a bunch of actors, and before you even hear either resume or anything else, it's all the food allergies, you know, they like, right. this is what we can't eat. <laughs> I didn't ask, but it's like. <laughs> uh, Iron Brewer whiskey. Whiskey, yeah. The, the, nice and straight to the point there, really. You got a favourite? Uh, I'm not really like a whiskey drinker, but I do like uh, uh, I I do like several of the malts, uh, just, you know, to sip. And when we have our burn supper, I get, believe it or not, like there's always a bottle of Buchanan's. So I sort of like that. I enjoy that. That's nice. Nice, nice. Um, that, I'll, I'll skip one because well, you're such a vegetarian, it won't really make sense. But last one, by no means least, tea cakes or caramel wafers? <laughs> Ca it's caramel wafer. Caramel yeah. wafer. Yeah. Because I think, because the Tonics tea cakes, and my wife will attest to this, the marshmallow is vegetarian. It's not got gelatin in it. It is a yeah, I think, I believe a friend of mine who was the first vegetarian I knew, like, had a campaign with McVitie's to take the lard out of their cookies because they, to make them vegetarian. He then went on to work in an odd way for Tonics, which is kind of funny, but I think he kind of was, he was, he was the, in the forefront of removing the animal from the, the biscuit. So, well, it doesn't need to be there. Truthfully, it's a biscuit. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Ian, this has been absolutely wonderful. Thank you for sharing your time with me today. I know you're incredibly busy, so thank you so That's much, Johnny. This has been great pleasure. I, it's almost like getting home to Scotland, which you know I I missed this year, but uh, get there soon. I hope. Well, I hope it's brought back some nice memories. Yes, absolutely, it has. Uh, well, keep yourself safe out there. Thank you very much. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you, you too, also, thank you. I loved that, I genuinely, genuinely loved that. I, I know I say this a lot of times when I have guests on because I do love chatting to them all, but I love every minute and of it, and Ian, thank you so, so much. I really, 
really enjoyed our chat. It was so much fun, so nice chatting to you. It's nice to share these memories with people that you don't even know. You know what I mean? When you've got a nice connection, just about the place you're from. And that was so much fun. Ian, thank you so much for sharing your time. And once again, uh, Lindsay, thank you so much for helping set up that interview as well. It really, really means the world to me. If you have enjoyed that, please remember, as always, hit that subscribe button, give us a like, leave a comment, but keep yourself safe out there. And till next time, bye humans. Thank you.